Hello everyone, my name is Tanya Nichols and I am a Creative Memories Advisor from California and I am so excited to share challenge number five with you for our April virtual crop. I really love this challenge because I love how they created this brick wall effect up at the top of the page. And so today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you on how to achieve this look. I chose to use our new Homestead collection because I think the papers are very versatile and go with a lot of different types of photos. So first of all, I needed two pieces of paper for the background. I chose this wood grain paper for the background on the bottom. And then I chose this sort of checkered black paper to be sort of the mortar look that is behind the bricks. I wanted that to be a different color than the regular background on the page. But I didn't want to waste paper by stacking the black paper on top of the um, wood grain paper. So what I did is I cut the top piece at four and a half by 12 inches and the bottom piece at seven and a half by 12 inches. Once I had two black strips at four and a half by 12 and two wood grain strips at seven and a half by 12 inches, I welded them together using this technique with a scrap of paper. I put adhesive all over the back of this and then I stacked the two pieces of paper on that and butted them right up against each other to give us this effect that it's one piece of paper but two different shades. So I really like that effect. It helps me save paper so that I have more of the wood grain paper to use in the future. So once I did that with both sides, then I needed to choose four pieces of designer paper that I could use for my bricks. So I chose some papers that I thought were really flattering with my photos, and I cut out nine one-inch strips. So I cut out two one-inch strips from three of the pieces of paper, and three one inch strips from the fourth piece of paper because you're gonna need just another extra brick from that third strip from this piece of paper. And I chose the green because I thought it just looked really well with my photos, went really well with my photos. So once you have your nine one inch strips, you are going to cut those strips down to one by three inch and this is going to create your bricks for that top of the page okay so you're going to cut them down to one by three inches now once you have all of those bricks you're going to end up with 25 one by three inch strips that you're going to use for the bricks so now let me show you how i laid them out on the page so as you can see, I've already done the first side for you. And what I did is I left about an eighth of an inch between the rows and between each brick. That allows the black sort of mortar piece of paper to sort of shine through in the back there. And then I just laid out the pattern so that each row had each color from my pattern. Now, I did not, there was no rhyme or reason to my pattern. I just mixed it up and went as I liked. Liked. And as you can see, it runs off the end. And I'm going to tell you how we're going to fix that problem in a second. But I started right here on the left hand side and I just started laying them out across, running it right off the end and leaving an eighth of an inch in between each row and each brick. So now the second row, I started actually on this second brick. And the reason I started that second brick is I wanted it to be sort of centered right between these two on the top row and then I took my pattern off in either direction with that row. On my third row I actually started from the right side and I brought the pattern back and this just sort of mixes it up a little bit so each of my little gaps in my bricks isn't all lined up perfectly. It just adds a little dimension I thought. And then on the last row I came back again from the left side and came all the way over. Then I ended up with strips that were hanging off of each end so I needed to cut them off. But on this side 
When I cut them off, I actually want to keep them. As you can see, I have three of them hanging off the end there. I want to keep them because we're going to continue the pattern over on to the next page. So what I did to um, cut them off is I took my 12 inch trimmer and I turned the piece of paper over and I lined the piece of paper over with my cutting mat right where I can see my line for my cutting mat and I checked the top the top and the bottom just to make sure that my paper is not getting cut because I want my paper to be lined up right against the cutting edge there I just want to be able to cut off the strips so then once I have it lined up I cut off the strips I'm not going to do that today just to save time um, and then you are going to save those strips because we are going to line up our two pieces of paper and you are going to add those strips to the other side of the page. And then you're just going to continue the pattern however you like on this side. I would say first lay it out to how you like it um, just to make sure that you're happy with the look. And then use your repositionable tape runner to adhere the bricks down once you're happy with the pattern because we want to make sure that you like the look. And if something gets a little crooked or cockeyed, you can go ahead and change it by pulling it off. That's the, the great thing about our repositionable tape runner is it allows us to move the paper and reposition it when we lay it down wrong. So let me just real quickly compete, uh, complete sorry, this pattern for us so you can see what it looks like. I think I want that one on the end. There we go. And on this bottom side, let's just go ahead and... Nope, I want the green one down there. Once you're happy with the look... I think I'm happy with that. Then you can go ahead and use your repositionable tape runner to glue them all down. Now, next I used the barbed wire um, chain border maker cartridge to create a little uh, break between my bricks and my other background paper. I cut out two white barbed wires using our white cardstock and two dark green barbed wires with our dark green cardstock. And I added the two together so it gives it this little um, sort of shadow makes it pop and looks makes it look three-dimensional and then I added that right between the brick wall and my background paper so it gives it this little edge between the two next I added my photos my embellishments my journaling boxes and I ended up with an absolutely beautiful page to reminisce the wedding toast for my special day I hope that this technique works for you and I look forward to seeing your pages at our virtual crop and um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Have a great day and have fun scrapbooking.